Hi guys, it's Nancy, and today we're going to be playing with some color bursts. Um, color bursts are highly concentrated pigments that are water activated, and they come in a liquid form and a powder form. So what I did here is I want to show you there's a couple different ways that I like to use them. So first thing is I took this multi-step butterflies from Kitchen Sink Stamps and I only grabbed um, like the last layer, which is the outline. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. So these are all the last layers. And I just randomly stamped them out with some VersaFine Claire nocturne ink which is a pigment ink and it is waterproof once it's dry so and this is just a piece of distressed watercolor um, card stock here and i stamped on the smooth side so there's a bumpy side and there's a smooth side okay this is my little paint box with all my little beautiful colors of um tissue paper towels okay so once i have everything stamped out there's a couple things we can do. We can paint directly with a watercolor brush. So what I mean by that is if you wanted certain areas that were a specific color, you could be very precise. So let me grab a color here. All right, so here is cerulean blue. And I can just put a little bit on my little stamping block here. I mean, a little bit goes a long way. See how tiny bit that is, right? And then you can just take a, a brush with some water or a watercolor brush, like I have here, and this already has water in it, and I can go right in and activate that pigment, and you can see how bright that color is. and use this directly onto my image. As a watercolor. And obviously the more water you add, as you can see here, the more lighter the color is, the more powder you have, the more concentration of that is going to give you a darker butterfly like what we have here. You can lighten it by adding more water. You can darken it by adding more powder. Okay, and with the watercolor brush, you basically just squeeze and then that water will clean the tip off so we don't have any more of that color on there okay that's one way of doing it the other way that I like to do it is actually to um, just spray this down and because this is watercolor paper it will reactivate so you'll see those blues I'm just using a water sprayer here will reactivate you can see that there see how it's reactivating and now we can just add any colors we want so this one I don't want that dark over green. I want some brighter lighter colors here and color bursts have so many different beautiful colors. So I will put the link down below for you guys to go check them out. They were a sponsor of Stamp Wars and I have had so much fun playing with their products. Um, I've, I've always been a fan, but I didn't know how fun they were until I actually started, you know, playing with them. And it's a very freeing that was a sap green. This one is lemon yellow. It's very freeing because it's almost magical. You're just laying down these color pigments and then all you do is just spray with water and you can see how they just come alive, right? And then if you don't like the way something is pulling up, like our colors down here, I can pull those down onto the paper towel. I can use my brush and go in and spread some of those crystals out. Sometimes they don't spread very well. You can do that. Okay, now I've got yellow, green. I've lost a little bit of my blue, so let me go back in with that cerulean blue. And these... Um, tips you just barely tap the end if you squeeze you're going to get a lot of color and I don't want to squeeze because I don't want too much and you can see how bright that pigment is so I'm just going to spray and you can see there oh no my blue is too dark I don't like it that way it's not a big deal I can just turn this keep adding water and it will spread itself and move out of the way 
And keep in mind, just like any other watercolor, once they dry, they kind of, um, they dry back a little bit, right? So they don't, they're not that bright and intense. I'm just gonna keep adding water until that color comes off and it lightens itself a little bit. So I have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. Now I feel like, okay, I've lost a little bit of my yellow. It's not a problem. Just layers on top of it. Oh, chartreuse, that's a good one. And it's your imagination of what colors you wanna do. And if you feel like it's getting a little too muddy and you don't like it, take some of that color off of there. You can heat set it in between. Like I'm liking where this is at now, so I'm gonna heat set this. You can see how it, as it dries out, it also, the paper starts to uncurl and flatten itself out. So as the moisture is released, that paper is straightening itself out. You can see how that color is drying back. So it's not so in your face. And from here, I can still add more pigments, more paper, or more water, whatever you wanna do. I can go back in with my brush and paint those butterflies directly like we did in the beginning. And if you wanted to flatten that more, you could run that through your, your die cutting machine. But look how beautiful that background came out. Almost looks like it's patterned paper that I purchased just from using the color burst. And just wanted to give you guys a tip. If you follow my channel and you love butterflies, or maybe you like dragonflies, uh, you might want to watch my channel over the next few days. Might have a video popping up at midnight. There might be a special limited edition set. So if you know, you know, but that's all I can say. Just keep an eye out. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Um, I only do a midnight video once a year. So hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about here. And it might be in the next uh, day or two. Just giving you, Just giving you a little hint there, all right? So that one's really, really pretty. Let's see if we can make a background and then duplicate that with some florals. So let's make, again, I'm gonna do the, not the textured side. Can you guys see, can the camera? Okay, so that's the textured side of the watercolor paper. I'm gonna use the flat side, which is the back side. And for this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more precise where I want my color. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm gonna take some of this blue. We're gonna use this up. You'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. Just making little clusters of blue. Okay, and then I want kind of a purple color. 
let's add the ones. So they have some that have metallics in them. They have some that have some liquid already in them. Um, here's one that's called Wisteria. So this is the liquid watercolor. It already has that mixed for me, so I don't have to add any water. I'm just going to take one teeny tiny drop of that. And add a little bit more from my water brush. And there you can see some of that. All right, now I'm going to heat set this because I want those to kind of stay in that general area. We're going to spread it out in a moment, but what, first we're going to heat set it. That's pretty dry. There's still a little bit of moist areas, but that's okay. Now I'm going to add in my water and I'm gonna spread this out and I want it to kind of go downwards. So I'm gonna put a little angle there in my little box. And you see the water still activates that, but there's still these little kind of dots in the background. That's what we want. All right, we want that color there. I'm gonna use my brush, spread it a little bit. All right, and I'm okay with that blue that's gone down there because we're going to make that green. So, oops, and heat set that again. I know that looks like a hot mess, but you gotta trust the process here. It's gonna take a couple more layers. So Tracy, I hope you're watching T because T's, I'm always like saying, I don't like to do these messy projects, but I think I'll do okay on this one. All right, so here we're gonna take a little bit of olive green. It's already liquid format. They also have metallic. So if you wanna add some sparkle, some shimmer, you can do that. darker green. Let's see if I can find a darker one. That was olive green, right? Halo green, that's more like a green blue. We'll try a little bit of that. One tiny little drop. This stuff is gonna last you guys forever.
have a lot of the lighter greens. I don't have a whole bunch of the dark greens. Oop, just saw one and I lost it. Nope. Oh no, that's too dark. That's like a brown. We don't want brown. All right, so here I'm gonna take the olive green, and this is the powdered one. And I'm gonna make my concentration here. So I'm gonna do a little poof with the powder. Very little tap, tap, tap. Go back out with my watercolor brush. There we go, that's a much darker. For this part, I need a paper towel. And we're going to wet this. Spray, spray, spray. that very very light blue again the cerulean blue and I'm going to wet the top portion it's very saturated and I'm going to add very light sprinkle of this look at that how that blooms very pretty but I don't want it that dark so I'm going to go in with this paper towel I'm actually going to wet my paper towel I'm going to crumple it up and I'm going to lift lift all of that out of my, what I'm gonna call my sky area. So I want some of that blue, I want it blooming, but I want it to be very, very light. So I'm gonna wet that and I'm gonna take a lot of that off of there. I don't want it to take away from, in case you guys didn't figure out these are supposed to be flowers. All right. Now I can go back in, add a little bit more color so it spreads out my flowers a little bit, but I don't wanna lose too much of that design there. is more of the chartreuse. little tiny bit of orchid not too much in fact that might be too much I'm gonna have to dab some of that out of the way Okay, 
this is getting to where I want it. Maybe a little bit more green. I'm going to heat set this. My vision is coming to life. I'm like a mad scientist. I'm almost done creating. I want to lighten my blue a little bit more in the sky. I'm going to add a little bit more purple to my flowers and a little more greenery to my to my stems there at the bottom. So again, I'm just going to wet this top part. Let that kind of soak in a little bit. And I'm just going to lift that. I have wisteria here. I'm just going to add Oh, this is the powdered one. Whoops. Well, I thought that, I mean, this is the water, liquid water color one. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So this is my abstract watercolor kind of floral background I'm going for. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing in my brain. And we're going to heat set this one more time. And then we're going to stamp over it. That's pretty dry. Before I stamp on this, I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. So it's the same sandwich as if you were die cutting, but I'm not die cutting. So I'm using my Gemini Junior. I have my bottom plate, magnetic shim, plastic shim, and then top plate. And just like that, no dies, just going to run that through my machine. Flat 
flatten it out a little bit more. And so now, we can bring our butterflies back in. This is a great way of using your layered stamps without doing any layering. You just make a background and stamp stamp them down. I was kind of going for these lilacs, but I'm gonna do the same thing and Instead of using multiple layers, I'm going to grab this last layer and I'm gonna grab a dark purple ink. That's the last layer of the largest flower. I'm gonna grab one of the smaller last layer. dark green and grab the leaves and the stems. And I'm taking the last layer because it's the layer that is not as solid. You have some of the details so you can tell, you know, that it's leaves, but you don't have too much of the detail that it interrupts, you know, what my, what is my image supposed to be here? It's kind of like mixed media, I guess. And 
that's it. That's how you make your own backgrounds or color in. We can even color the butterfly in. Grab that cerulean blue again. There we go. All right, guys. So this is the one just stamping and using it on the background. And here's the one where we made the background and then we stamped over it and added a little bit more detail. There we go. I know you guys got some color bursts, so I'm going to challenge you to use them. Post your um, makes in the Foiling Snobs Club. And if you don't have color bursts and you wanna try them out again, they have the powdered versions, they have the liquid liquid watercolor version, and they also have the liquid metals version. So a lot of fun. These are the ones that have the um, metallics in them. Um, and I find that these are very bright, very reasonable for how much you get. This will last you a really, really long time. And again, you can use them for background, you can use them for watercoloring, you can use them for ink smushing, so many different things you can try out. So check them out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you had fun watching me make a mess, don't forget my thumbs up before you leave and keep on stamping. Bye, guys.